Welcome back to Inside City Hall. As we head into the holidays, we want to put a spotlight on a major issue facing our city. The number of New Yorkers facing hunger and food shortages grew in the five boroughs, especially during the pandemic. But there was some good news. A new report released by the organization Hunger Free America New York City uh, shows that the number of city residents who did not have enough to eat dropped by 56 percent once a boost in federal aid was given to food assistance programs. But now that extra funding is coming to an end, and many are worried about what this will mean for families this holiday season and beyond. My next guest heads the organization behind the study. Joel Berg is the CEO of Hunger Free America. Thanks for being here. Very good to see you. Thanks, Errol. Um, there, I saw that there, there was this 45% drop uh, uh, from uh, the, the assistance uh, in the metropolitan area, in part because we had a food czar, it was an emergency, everybody understood that everybody needed to be fed. Um, is, does that need to be our permanent operating assumption? A permanent operating assumption me, me, needs to be that we shouldn't think charities can solve the problem, that we need to get help from our very, very, very rich uncle named Sam. Mm. We do have these huge programs like the SNAP program that used to be called the Food Stamps program, the WIC program for pregnant women and children, uh, the school meals. They're way, way underutilized. Groups like mine, Hunger Free America, do work to help people access these benefits. And while I love the pantries and kitchens and food assistance organizations, people need to understand that getting people government benefits is far more economically efficient. It's far better for the economy. You know, we're about to face a 79% cut in city funding for our benefits access work. We may actually have to close our office in the Bronx, lay off staff, while feeding agencies are getting lots of money because people really don't get those warm and fuzzies mm. from the federal safety net. But the federal safety net's what prevented mass starvation here. Yeah, you know, the, the, the dimensions of it, I think, are important for people to understand. I'm looking at your study, and it says um, the, the federal funding on SNAP alone nearly doubled from $208 million to $408 million per month. That is a huge amount of money. Yes, the food stamp SNAP program is going to spend a few billion dollars. Billions. A few billion dollars. Just for in, New York City. Just New York City. And keep in mind, when you go to a pantry and kitchen, as even the best run run ones, right. you don't have your choice of food. Usually you can't often pick halal or kosher food. We're about to get a famously vegan uh, mayor. And I note that when you get SNAP benefits, you can eat all vegan. You can eat, shop at farmer's markets. You can't do that just with charities. So not only is it a lot more money, it's a lot healthier food choices and a lot more humane food choices. You, you're uh, the expert in this. You used to work in the Federal Agricultural Department. You, you are an expert in this field. Why was your agency's budget cut? I think really it's just a jurisdictional dispute between the city council and uh, the mayor's office. We were funded with extra money during the pandemic. Yeah. It came out of the food czar's office, and that office no longer exists. Uh -huh. So there was no baseline in wonkish terms to put it to. And now, frankly, you know, the mayor's office saying, well, the council's got to pass something to fix it. The council's saying, we don't have money. The mayor's got to fix it. Outgoing council members are saying, take it up with the new council. And I say, respectively, you're still on our payroll yeah. from tax dollars until December 31st. First, if we wait till the next budget in June and it takes us six months to a year to actually get the money, we will have to close this office. And, you know, and we're very lean and mean. We discussed there are all these scandals with wasteful nonprofits. Well, I, yeah. I still get 40% less adjusted for inflation than I got when, at my salary when I left the government 20 years ago. Yeah. We, we do well with this money. We just need to. <laughs> yeah, get I mean, the so, 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 some, yeah, I think the, some of the recent scammers who have been caught uh, in the social services system probably spent more on luxury shoes and clothes than uh, your agency is now being deprived of. You're, you're, and, and what you do is help connect people with federal benefits, meaning uh, you're saving the city money, meaning they're not going to show up at a city shelter or, or food right. distribution point. They're going to get the federal benefits to which they are entitled. And not only are the benefits paid for by the federal government, the federal government matches the city dollars for outreach. So every dollar we spend on SNAP outreach generates $60 worth of federal benefits. And we're talking half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, for us, that's all the money in, in, in the world. But mm -hmm. as you said, that's, that's less than certain nonprofit executives make, and that, that would fund sure. eight of our staff. Sure, sure. Um, very disappointed to hear that. What, what do you want our viewers to know? I mean, you know, you, 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 you've talked about it, and you sort of said it kind of jokingly, the warm and fuzzies. Uh, it, it's good for people to go out on Thanksgiving and to support your local uh, soup kitchen or pantry, uh, do a food drive, you know, bundle up some food, clothing for, for people who Ab need absolutely. it. Absolutely. But there's no substitute, you, you're saying, for... For government. Yeah. A, to create jobs. 
B, to raise wages, and C, to have an adequate safety net. Now, you were talking about undocumented immigrants before. There are a lot of food programs that they're not eligible for. They're not eligible for SNAP. Uh, their kids might be, but they're not. And so these agencies are really critical in filling in the gaps, and they're run by some of the best people on the planet, mm -hmm. religious people who really walk the walk. But understand, before... Before the pandemic, the federal safety net equaled 15 times, one five times, the dollar amount of food distributed by every charity in New York and America. Uh, if you just increase participation in these programs by even 5%, that would dwarf what every one of the charitable food distribution organizations in New York City are giving out. And if you do things like end the subminimum wage for restaurant workers, which we're calling on Governor Hochul to do, mm -hmm. and raise wages for people, that would dramatically reduce hunger without costing taxpayers a, a, a penny. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're very excited that Mayor-elect Adams has made it a top priority to make it easier for people to apply online for benefits, something we've long advocated for. So uh, we're looking forward to talking to his transition team and the new people administration to, to get that done okay we are going to keep the focus on scale i mean the 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 important human interest stories we we've got a million of them and as you're right we're on the side of the angels when when people want to help people but uh we've if we're spending half a billion dollars a month uh we're not going to do it all with canned food drives we've got to get government involved yes, thanks very much joel Berg. let's uh take a quick break now when we come back while the city says it has not been facing a shortage of school bus paraprofessionals, some families say that they've been having a hard time getting students to their classrooms. We'll explain why and bring you one family story next. Stay with us.